Welcome to the Enjoy More 30s Family Finance Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to making life more enjoyable for young families by hitting on the financial topics that tend to weigh on us, stress us out, and distract our focus from simply enjoying life. Hello and welcome as always to the Enjoy More 30s Family Finance Podcast. We're here as always to try to help you make sense of some of these money issues so that you can spend more time in your life without anxiety, more time in your life actually enjoying your family and the things that matter most to you. So today we're on the second episode of your Money Mindset for Kids series. As always, if you like what you're hearing, please make sure to subscribe, follow us on Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. Clicking that star, leaving the review, it really helps us reach the other millions of other young families out there just like you. Last week, we discussed what savings bonds are likely costing you, the opportunity that you're giving up or missing by not having that money instead in some place where it could grow to a much higher value for your children's future potentially. So if you did not listen to last week's episode, please make sure to check that out. Today's episode, though, is titled Education Savings. It is not all 529 plans, where we're going to cover the various types of accounts that you can use to save for your children. 529 plans for education are the default that people seem to hear about. You've probably heard the term 529 plan, but it's not by any means the only option or even the best option for what you may be wanting to accomplish yourself or your children. This overall, I find to be a very similar situation to when I was looking for colleges. I heard about Ivy League schools. I heard about those schools that I may have seen on TV with sports, but what school was actually right for me? There was no right or wrong per se, I needed one that would be the best fit for the things that I was actually looking for, though, right? I toured different schools, and I wound up really, really liking the College of New Jersey, or how it's known around these parts as TCNJ. What was the most important to me, though, when it came to a school was that it was reasonably close to home. So for me, that meant a couple of hours uh, worth of driving. I didn't want to go out to, to California or Arizona or anything like that. I wanted it to have a somewhat higher bar to entry that I had to reach a certain mark to really be able to get in, a good business school program, of course, and a smaller community campus type of feel. I didn't want to go to a school that had, you know, 50,000 people in it. If I was wanting to be far away from home, though, if I wanted to major in, I don't know, robotics or cooking or go to a really large school, TCNJ wouldn't have been a fit for me at all, never mind the best fit. So when you're looking at saving for your kids, you need to really first organize what is most important to you, just like I had to do when I was picking my college and probably exactly the same thing that you did when you were picking yours. The two main trade-offs that you're going to have to choose between when you're thinking about what do I want to be able to provide for my child are flexibility and tax-free growth. So the goal for today's episode is for you to walk away and say, hey, I really would like more flexibility when I'm saving for my kids, or hey, I'd really like more tax-free growth that's specific for them going to college. One of those two things is what I want you to be able to walk away from today's episode having more clarity with in your mind. Now let's start with the tax-free growth because that sounds like the no-brainer answer, right? I want tax-free growth. Who wouldn't want tax-free growth? If you use a 529 plan, that's where the tax-free growth comes into play if, and here comes the trade-off, if it is used for qualified college expenses. So tuition, books, room and board, all of that kind of stuff is covered. However, let's say now that Jimmy gets a full ride to school though, and so you decide to pull money out of that 529 plan to buy him a car. All of that growth that's built up is no longer tax-free. And not only is it not tax-free, but that now causes an extra 10% penalty on all of that growth because you did not use it specifically for school. The 529 is built specifically for school. They have some flexibility in that you can change the beneficiary. So if Jimmy doesn't need the money because he's so smart and got a full ride, then you could change the beneficiary to his brother Johnny and use the funds for his education instead. So basically, if you would say, hey, I'm really confident that my kid is going to college, I'm confident that it's going to be expensive and that I'm going to want to pay for it, then a 529 plan could very, very well be a great fit for what you're trying to accomplish. The other option I mentioned, though, of the two main trade-offs is flexibility. Here, if you open up an account, let's say, in your name, but earmark it for your children, 
then you maintain full flexibility of the funds. The account doesn't grow tax-free, so again the trade-offs, but you can use it for literally anything without penalty. Again, Jimmy gets a full ride example. You can pull the money and buy him that car without any penalties. He can use that money for a down payment on his first home, uh, getting married, I mean, whatever it may be. This account also can invest in anything. So it's more flexible from that standpoint as 529 plans have specific 529 plan funds and assets that you have to use. Now, notice in my example, I said, you know, say in your name, putting the funds in your name instead of the child's name. And now there's a point to why I said that. There is something you can do. You may have heard of an UTMA or an UGMA account, but here are the funds now you're legally giving to your child. And so when they turn what they call the age of majority, which is usually 21, depending on the state you're in, they have full access to that money technically. Now, I'm not sure about you. You can think back. I'm 35 now. If I think back to when I was 21, I wasn't, let's say, as responsible <laughs> as I am today at 21. So it's certainly an option, but I would, I would definitely tell you to think about that route and think if you want your 21-year-old or whatever they may be to have full access to a large chunk of money. Now, if you're asking me what I personally would like the best, so, hey, Joe, what are you doing for your kids? Especially if you have younger kids like me. So I have a five-year-old, or excuse me, an almost five-year-old and an almost two-year-old as of the recording of this episode. To me, the flexibility could be helpful as I'm really not sure what college is going to look like or cost 15 years from now. The 529s also allow for a lump sum contribution equal to five years of the gifting limit. So I could take $15,000, which is the annual gifting limit, times five, so $75,000 in total, and I could mass fund a 529 plan for my daughter Avery's last 10 years before college hits. So Avery turns, you know, eight or 10 or whatever it may be. I could take $75,000, throw it into the 529 plan, and if that, say, doubles to 150, then I have all of that growth now at that point forward, which is all tax-free. So you still have an opportunity if you start flexible to go the 529 route when your kids get a little bit older if you feel like you have more certainty on what the road ahead is going to do. Lastly, you don't have to pick one or the other. If you're not comfortable with either of the options 100%, if you don't say, I really connect with being flexible or I really connect with just going all out and providing max funding for college, you can put some funds in each bucket but certainly have a discussion with your spouse on what is most important to you both. Is it flexibility or maximizing that tax-free, going all out for college approach? And again, there's no right or wrong. It's the correct tool for what you are most wanting to accomplish. So thanks for tuning in today, and please make sure to join us for next week's episode. It's called School Doesn't Teach Money, It's On You where we're going to cover just how little school prepares your children for managing their finances and what you as the parent can do to change that. So out of all the episodes this season, I think that this one is super, super important. So make sure to check in next week. Overall, if you are able to implement what we covered, like we always say, that's just wonderful. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm putting out this information. You have less to worry about than before. You can focus more on enjoying life. If, though, you're wanting help with these things or you have questions that I didn't cover in the episode, please make sure to reach out to me. Check out the Ask Joe section on the show's website at www.enjoymore30s.com. That's enjoymore30s.com. So until next week, thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. The conversations on this show are Joe's opinions and provided for general information purposes only. They do not constitute accounting, legal, tax, or other professional advice for your specific situation. You should always seek appropriate advice from a financial advisor, accountant, lawyer, or other professional before acting upon any content or information found here first. Joe is affiliated with New Horizons Wealth Management, LLC, a branch office of TFS Securities, Inc., and TFS Advisory Services, an SEC-registered investment advisor, member FINRA SIPC.